Hi, welcome to the video solution for an Excel physics past paper. Uh, this is uh, IEL physics unit 1 January 2018 part 2. So let's start. Question number 11. Uh, the lead in a pencil consists of graphite and a clay mixture. The greater the quantity of the clay in the mixture, the greater the hardness of the pencil. State what is meant by the term hardness. The hardness is all about uh, the difficulty uh, in uh, scratching the surface or uh, indentation. So you can say that it is difficult to, in, uh, to, to make some in, uh, indentation marks on the surface. So you can say the hardness is the difficulty in indentation. Okay, so uh, next part B, some paint manufacturer use pencil to test the hardness of the paint uh, using the equipment shown. A pencil of known hardness is placed into a pencil tester and the tester is pushed across the surface coated in the paint under test. This is the pencil, pencil okay, pencil that direction of the moment, surface coated in the thin layer of the paint, okay. This is repeated uh, using pencils of increasing hardness until the paint becomes scratched. State what can be deduced about the hardness of the pencil when the paint becomes scratched. Because uh, paint is scratched, that means uh, at that moment or at that time, uh, paint is less harder than the pencil or pencil is harder than the paint so hardness is greater than the hardness of the pencil is greater than hardness of the paint so scratching of paint is showing that the hardness of the pencil is greater than the paint question number 12 a trade uh, mills may be used in a gym to increase the difficulty of training, the gradient of the treadmill can be increased. A person on a treadmill warm, warms up by running at a constant speed of 2.5 meter per second. Okay, this is the speed with the treadmill horizontal. He then sets the treadmill to an angle of 3 degree to the horizontal and continues to run at the same speed. Calculate the additional power that his legs would have to supply when running for 10 minutes with the treadmill at this angle okay so you need to find the power when the treadmill is at 30 degree uh, sorry it's a 3 degree angle mass of the athlete is 80 kg okay so it's all about uh, the inclined plane situation remember on inclined plane we have a plane making some angle theta with the horizontal so this surface is inclined plane and you put some object on the inclined plane on this object the two main forces are acting one is the weight directly downward and the contact force of the inclined plane which is r and uh, this W can be resolved into component. So you can say that you have a perpendicular component, which is W cos theta, and the parallel component, parallel means parallel to the inclined plane. And this is W sine theta. So the important point uh, in inclined plane situation is R and W cos theta always remains balance or they are equal. So R equals W cos theta. So the only force acting on inclined plane is W sine theta and this is the force that cause the motion along the inclined plane. So if the object is falling or sliding down, this is sliding down due to W sine theta. Or if 
some person is walking uphill then the person has to do some work against the w sin theta so w sin theta is the force acting on the person uh, so we need to find the power so the idea is we need to find the power and the power is work done upon time and the work done is force into distance the force is the force acting on the person when moving along the inclined plane and remember this force is uh, is basically the component of the weight w sine theta so this force is w sine theta and s is the distance and if you see the velocity is 25 meter per second so in one second 25 meter distance is covered so you can calculate the work done multiplying w sine theta by the distance 2.5 so work done will be uh, mg sine theta because w sine theta w is the weight so mg sine theta m is 80 g is uh, 9.81 times sine of 3 this is w sine theta the force acting on the athlete times the distance and distance is 2.5 2.5 if you multiply you have a work done is equal to one zero two point eight joule and as uh, we are talking about time and this is distance covered in one second so you can say that the power is work done upon time time is one second so uh, one zero two point eight volt sorry so one point one zero two point eight watt so this is the power suggest why the running on a treadmill is easier than running on a running track clearly uh, the treadmill generally use uh, inside inside the home or or the room where there is a um, less air so less air resistance so easy to walk or easy to run on the treadmill so you can say that due to less air resistance it's easy to run on a treadmill so that's how you can write question number 13 as a student was investigating the viscosity of an oil she carried out a simple experiment to measure the rate of flow of the oil she poured the oil into a funnel and allowed it to drain into a beaker the time t uh, for the volume in the beaker to reach 150 cmq was measured using a digital stopwatch uh, okay so state how the student can determine the rate of flow of the oil in meter cube per second so rate of flow rate of flow generally is volume flowing per unit time so she can divide the measured volume that is 150 cm cube with the time measured by the stopwatch so volume divided by time but because we need to give answer in meter cube per second so cm cube need to be converted into meter cube uh, dividing by 10 to the power 6 10 to the power 6 this is 10 to the power 6 so when you divide the centimeter cube with the 10 to the power 6 it can convert into meter cube okay so dividing volume by time after converting cm cube into meter cube
part B. The method in A gave uh, only a single value for the rate of flow. The student wanted to improve her experiment and uh, by using a, a graphical method to, do, to determine the rate of flow. She used the same setup but placed the beaker on a balance and recorded the mass of the beaker and the oil every two seconds. Uh, beaker and the oil every two seconds. Uh, state how the measurement could be used to plot a graph and obtain a value for the rate of flow in the oil of the oil in meter cube per second. Assume that rate of flow of oil is constant. So again, what's going on? The student is measuring mass, so different values of mass, and after every two seconds, so you have a, a column of mass first time and then mass so for different values of time interval and amount of mass poured in a beaker so you can see that you can plot a graph between mass against time and you can expect a straight line and from the straight line you can find the gradient so the gradient will give you a rate of flow of mass but you need to find the rate of flow in in meter cube per second you need a volume and you have a mass per unit time which is a gradient so finally the gradient is divided by the density can give you the volume volume per unit time so that's how you can use the values so plotting graph m against t finding the gradient gradient divided by the density will give you a rate of flow of uh, rate of flow in term of volume per unit time or in term of meter cube second inverse Part 2, state one advantage and one disadvantage of uh, using graphical method to determine the rate of flow of oil compared to the method in A. Advantage of course because we are using various reading to plot the graph so we will have a, a, a recognition or we can, we can see that if there is any anomalous reading we can uh, get rid of this anomalous reading and we can have an idea if there is a a variation in in flow at any instant so we can detect this variation the more but the most important is because we are using various values and the graph so we will have a more accurate value than uh, the method one and the disadvantage is is all about the time because the time interval if you see is every two seconds so it will be really difficult to to record the mass and the time at the same time so there is a reaction time involved so this is the disadvantage of this method so you can write like this the student repeated the experiment in b using sample of the oil uh, with a different temperature. Explain how the rate of flow of uh, the oil will vary with the temperature. So this is temperature and the rate of flow. Basically, rate of flow depends on the viscosity, that how much the viscosity is and the viscosity depends on temperature so if you increase the temperature due to which viscosity is going to decrease and rate of flow 
will be increased. So increasing temperature causing uh, rate of flow to increase due to decrease in viscosity. So you can write like that. Question number 14, a train moves between two stations, a simplified velocity time graph for the motion of the train is shown. This is a velocity and time graph. Draw a corresponding acceleration time graph for the motion of the train. Show all uh, the working in the space below. So this is the graph at which you need to plot the acceleration time graph and we need to show the working. Okay, so if you see the velocity time graph, the, the first interval is from 0 to that point and I guess this point is 40. So from 0 to 40, the train is accelerating. So you have a positive acceleration. <coughs> Excuse me. And after 40, the train moves with the constant speed uh, till 300 seconds. So from 0 to 40, the car is accelerating. That means positive acceleration. 40 to uh, 300, velocity is not changing. So acceleration is 0. And after 300 till uh, 360, you have a negative gradient. That means it is uh, decelerating uh, at till 360 so you have a three types of acceleration to discuss the first interval 0 to 40 in which you have a positive acceleration then 40 to 300 zero acceleration and then 300 to 360 it is a negative acceleration so the working is all about finding these acceleration so you can say that uh, the acceleration in the first interval is a1 and a1 from the graph you can clearly see that uh, you have uh, the gradient of this line because the, this is velocity time graph. So gradient of this line, this line, the first interval 0 to 40 will give you the acceleration a1. And x gradient is rise over run or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So I am choosing this point, the maximum one, and this point, the minimum one to find the gradient. And then you can see that 25, 26, okay, the twin. Uh, y2 minus y1 so 27 minus 0 divided by 40 minus 0 that means 40 so a1 is 0 0.675 meter second minus 2 and uh, a2 the acceleration in the second interval is 0 between 40 to 300 we have a horizontal line, zero gradient, so zero acceleration. And A3 is the acceleration in the last interval from 300 to 360. And again, you have a 27 to zero. So you can figure out A3 like uh, zero minus 27 divided by x2 minus x1, which is uh, uh, 360, this 360 minus 300 so it is 60 and your answer will be minus 0 minus 0 0.45 meter second minus 2 so you can say that this is 0 100 and this is 50 so 10 20 okay this is 50 so this is somewhere here you, you, ha you, you have a 40 and then you can take 0.6 and 0.4 okay you can take uh, 0 0.2 and this one is 0 0.4 and then 0 0.6 and below you have a 0 0.2 with minus and then 0 0.4 with minus. 
that means from 0 to 40 0 to 40 you have positive acceleration 0 0.675 so 0.675 would be somewhere here okay and then you can see that you have a horizontal line and then if you wish you can draw a dotted line to join this and then from 40 you must mark 40 here and then from 40 to uh, 300 you have a zero acceleration so a line okay so this is a horizontal line along the x-axis showing that zero acceleration and after 300 you have a negative acceleration at minus 4.5 so this is minus 4 and then you can take somewhere here according to your scale and then till 460 so 350 and then 360 is there so you can see yes this is your minus 4.5 and then you can join with this the horizontal line and you can mark this minus yeah okay and this is 360 this is your corresponding acceleration so 3 a1 and a2 and then a3 while the train is moving at a constant speed a passenger throws a ball horizontally out of the window as shown in the figure Okay, this is the ball thrown in that direction, direction of travel of the train, figure 1. Okay, the path of the ball when viewed from above is shown in figure 2. Any effect, uh, effect of the air have been ignored. So explain the shape of this path. Okay, so because we have ignored air resistance, so in horizontal direction there is no force acting that's why uh, the path traveled by by the ball is a straight line due to only a vertical velocity that's how you can say that air resistance is ignored so no horizontal force that's why the path is a straight line The path of the ball when viewed from the side is shown in figure 3. The effect of the of air resistance has been ignored. Explain the shape of this path. So you are looking at from the side view. So for this ball throwing, I would say that if I am looking at, at the train from the side view, that means the ball uh, is thrown towards me and then we see the path this path so this is all uh, all because of uh, two velocities or you can say uh, in vertical direction the weight is acting or the gravitational force or just net force acting in a vertical direction that cause an acceleration so the velocity is increasing and uh, Horizontal speed remains same because the horizontal horizontally resistance is ignored. So in horizontal di direction, there is no acceleration. But in vertically, you have acceleration. That's why you have this kind of path. Figure 2 and 3 are shown again below add to these figures the path of the ball if the effect of air resistance is not ignored okay is not ignored that means air resistance is acting so if air resistance is acting then the path traveled by by this figure 2 which was initially at 
this much long but due to resistance there will be an opposing force uh, acting on this on this ball which uh, reduce the length of or length of the of the path or the distance so this arrow must be somewhere here the shorter than the original given and the side view is because horizontally air resistance is, is acting that means uh, there will be a net force acting horizontally so the horizontal path will be like this Thank you very much, have a nice time, see you in the next part.